Welcome back to Learning English Pro. In this English lesson, I will be covering the topic of medical equipment and tools. This episode is especially useful for those working in the medical industry, but also for those who may need to use some of these useful objects in day-to-day -day life. And there are over 70 terms to cover in this video, so get ready and make sure to check out the word list in the description for revision after the lesson. And if you're looking for even more medical English vocabulary, make sure to check out my videos. Links are in the description and on screen right now. So without further ado, if you're ready, let's begin our lesson. The first piece of medical equipment we'll take a look at is the crutch. Repeat after me, crutch. When they're given as a pair, they're simply called crutches, the plural form. Our next piece of equipment is called a walker. Repeat after me, walker. This is typically given to older people who may have mobility issues. And we also have the wheelchair. Repeat after me, wheelchair. Next up, we have plaster cast. Plaster cast. This can also be referred to as plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris. More advanced versions of a plaster cast would be called a synthetic cast. Synthetic cast. We also have the splint. Repeat after me, splint. A splint involves a rigid material supporting and immobilizing a broken bone when it has been set. Common types of splint are the leg splint and finger splint. Similar to a splint, we have a support. Something like a wrist support can help with a fracture or a broken bone when it is healing. For a broken or injured foot, a support boot is often used. This can also be referred to as a brace boot. And next up, we have a brace itself, which is like a bigger version of a splint. Brace. A common version of the brace is the leg brace, but there's also lots more, such as the neck brace, as shown on screen, but you can also see sometimes a back brace or even a body brace. A similar device which is used for a broken arm is called a sling. Repeat after me, sling. Let's move on to our next piece of equipment, which is bandage. Repeat after me, bandage. There are lots of different types of bandage. This one is called a compression bandage, or sometimes it's called an elastic bandage. Next up, we have dressing. Repeat after me, dressing. This is a sterile bandage which is applied directly onto a wound. Another type of bandage is called medical gauze. Medical gauze. This is the thin transparent fabric which is often used along with bandages. We also have adhesive tape and cotton wool. These can be found in lots of other settings than a medical practice. Adhesive tape and cotton wool. A common type of bandage found in the home is referred to as a band-aid in American English, that's a trademark by the way, and as a plaster in UK English. A more general term for it would be an adhesive bandage. Lots of these types of bandages and gauzes can be found in a first aid kit. 
This can be a piece of medical equipment that can be found in lots of different workplaces and is useful in case of an emergency or an accident. This small medical tool is known as a swab. Repeat after me. Swab. And this is a stethoscope. Let's try it one more time. Stethoscope. For measuring a patient's temperature, we use a thermometer. Thermometer. Another test we can do for a patient is a blood test. Blood test. This is done with a syringe. Repeat after me. Syringe. It is tempting to say syringe, but it's syringe. And this part of the syringe is known as the needle. Needle. Something which is commonly found in lots of different medical settings is a vial. Repeat after me. Vial. And similar to a vial, we have a test tube. Test tube. Moving along, our next piece of equipment is called a blood pressure cuff. Blood pressure cuff. Our next piece of equipment can be known as telemetry pads or ECG electrodes. These are used to monitor important functions in a patient's body. If you've ever broken a bone, you will have had an X-ray. X-ray. This device is placed on the finger and used to measure the amount of oxygen in the blood. It's called a pulse oximeter. Pulse oximeter. To find out how heavy someone is, you would need a weighing scales. Weighing scales. Our next device is used to look at the ear and eardrum. The otoscope. Repeat after me. Otoscope. Let's move along to some more smaller tools, like the tweezers. Repeat after me. Tweezers. We also have the scalpel. Repeat after me. Scalpel. Next up, we have some scissors. Now, there's lots of different types of scissors in the medical world, but generally we can refer to them as medical scissors or surgical scissors. To provide oxygen to a patient, we use an oxygen mask. Oxygen mask. To help a patient breathe, we use a piece of equipment called a ventilator. Ventilator. And when a patient is not breathing on their own, a resuscitator can be used to help them breathe once more. Resuscitator. The type of hospital bed which moves on wheels is called a gurney. Repeat after me. Gurney. The type of bed which is used by an ambulance is sometimes referred to as a stretcher. Stretcher. Next up, we have the magnifier. Magnifier. And to help see even closer, we have a microscope. Microscope. And with some examinations, a doctor may use something like a telescope to look inside your body. Telescope. 
Our next device helps get medication into the lungs. Inhaler. Repeat after me. Inhaler. And the IV drip helps get medication into your bloodstream. IV, of course, stands for intravenous. Something which is commonly connected to an IV drip is a saline bag. Repeat after me. Saline bag. A blood bag is another container which is sometimes connected to an IV drip. Blood bag. The blue, green and sometimes pink outfits worn by medical personnel are known as scrubs. Scrubs. Medical personnel can also be seen wearing a surgical mask over their face at some occasions and also a scrub cap to cover their hair. A scrub cap can also be called a skull cap. This piece of equipment is known as the examination table. Repeat after me. Examination table. And our final piece of equipment is known as a medical chair. Repeat after me. Medical chair. And that brings us to the end of this English lesson on medical equipment and tools. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to revise the word list in the description below. If you're like me and have a huge passion for the English language, you should definitely check out and subscribe to my channel, Learning English Pro, where you'll find lots of different videos covering lots of different vocabulary topics. You're sure to boost your English and really improve your level of English. Coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you, along with the link to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So hit that to get all my videos. That just leaves me to say, I hope you have a fantastic day. And remember, keep learning English like a pro.